Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome PCS members and uh, friends uh, to our today's uh, PCS IBS seminar. It's a great pleasure to have with us Professor Pedro Ribeiro. And I would like to invite our scientific host, Alexei, to introduce our speaker. Please, Alexei. Yeah, thank you, Tilen. So our today's speaker is Pedro Ribeiro from Instituto Superior Tecnico in Lisbon. He's going to talk about dissipative quantum dynamics from order and chaos. So Pedro received his PhD at the University of Pierre and Marie Curie in 2008, and then was holding um, a number of appointments, postdoctoral appointments at MIT uh, Institute um, Superior Technico in Lisbon, uh, in the Max Planck Institute for the Physics of Complex Systems in Dresden, and also in uh, Russian Quantum Center in uh, Moscow. And uh, he's presently an auxiliary professor um, at the Instituto Superior Technico in Lisbon. And he's also a visiting uh, professor at the Beijing Computational Science Research uh, Center. So Pedro in general is interested in um, correlated uh, many body systems and quantum information specifically at the interplay of uh, many body effects, quantum information and non-equilibrium processes as you can infer from uh, the title of the talk already. And so with this, Pedro, uh, please, you can start. The screen is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexei. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to talk here. Of course, I would like to visit in person and I hope I can do that one day. Meanwhile, uh, so this, uh, I mean, COVID brought a lot of bad things, but I also think that it brought, brought some, some good things. And one of them is uh, um, that people now are much likely to go online to, to, to see seminars and also to give them this is, I mean, this has improved a lot, at least uh, from our part here in Lisbon, we have had a very uh, um, active seminar uh, uh, activity which uh, was sometimes hard to, to do in, in person. So I don't know how, what could happen there. We have a bit, I mean, much more resources. So maybe that, that impacted negatively, but for us, but for us actually it was, it was uh, nice that, I mean, that, that particular aspect. Um, so uh, let's go to business. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about um, uh, open quantum systems. And uh, uh, the, so this, this gives rise to dissipative dynamics and the, the title is from order to chaos. Um, and and uh, so it's from this figure, which I will, will mean order to this figure that uh, will mean chaos. And, and, and then I hope to, by the end of the talk, you understand why one means one and the other means uh, the other thing. Um, so first of all, let me introduce uh, my, sorry, I have a problem changing slides somehow. Okay, uh, my collaborators. Um, um, so, uh, Juan was a, a master student here, he's now a PhD student in Geneva. Um, uh, he did some, some uh, work that I'll present about uh, integrable uh, uh, systems or regular uh, open quantum systems. Um, Lucas is a PhD student here in Lisbon, and he has been uh, the main driving force behind um, most of the things that I'm going to, to uh, tell you about. Um, Tankut Khan uh, is in uh, State University of, of New York, and he uh, was uh, one of the collaborators in one of the works. And uh, uh, Thomas Prozen uh, um, has been collaborating with me for, for some time. He's also um, uh, co-advising uh, Lucas with, with me, um, and, and he also was involved in most of the things that I'm going to tell you about. So this is my menu. Again, uh, the overall background is dissipative quantum systems. And uh, first, I'm going to tell you about uh, regular dissipative uh, uh, systems. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to start simple and, and then building uh, complexity and uh, I mean, motivating more than, than uh, having some uh, um, uh, explanation or, or some, some uh, um, comprehensive uh, um, uh, studies of, of the transition to chaos. And then, and then uh, I get to the main part of the talk, which is the generic dissipative uh, quantum systems. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll do a digression to, uh, for the Hamiltonian case, uh, for people that don't have this background. <clears throat> and then, and then I'll, I'll uh, introduce you random Liouvillians and their, their properties. And finally, uh, the, the signatures of dissipative quantum pairs that, that we uh, uh, put forward. So let me let me start with a generic introduction about uh, open quantum systems. So, uh, sorry, I cannot see. Just okay. 
So um, uh, the, in, in, in the um, set of all possible quantum states, there, there's a, a few quantum states that are physically relevant and interesting. And among those, there's a small piece that are actually equilibrium states that are the things that we traditionally learn about in school and in, in, in I mean, the quantum matter physics is uh, mostly about equilibrium states. Now there's uh, a bunch of, of uh, interesting states that are not at equilibrium and they allow for uh, uh, phenomena that are not possible within this, this uh, equilibrium pond. Um, so this, some, some of these uh, things uh, have been recently found. Some already uh, were known for a long time. So dynamical phase transitions, time crystallinity, uh, universal electric classes that you don't see in equilibrium, and uh, uh, pattern formation, uh, uh, which goes a bit in, in line with time crystallinity for, for, uh, in, in the space domain. So this talk is about one of these uh, animals uh, in the, in the uh, uh, non-equilibrium uh, part of the of the states, and uh, it's it's uh, about uh, uh, Markov dissipation systems. So these systems are um, are of, of relevance in quantum optics uh, because the rotating wave approximation can be done, and, and this is gives a good approximation exactly for the kind of um, uh, um, master equation that I'll be talking about. Um, and you can also use it for inquiry to, to study inquiry transport, though this this has been much less developed. Um, so again, I'm having a problem with the slides. Okay. Um, so uh, let me just just uh, give you some background uh, on on uh, this Markovian dynamics. So the description of of a, a system plus uh, an environment um, is in general much more difficult because um, I would have to deal with the system degrees of freedom, but also the the environment degrees of freedom. Um, so in general, this cannot be done exactly, um, and uh, uh, and and so you, you have to rely on some approximation. So one of such, of such approximations that is particularly uh, suitable, um, and and it works very well in the uh, uh, physical uh, uh, limit where this is possible, is this Markovian approximation, or um, actually it's, it's a string of approximations that starts starts where uh, your environment time scales are much. Uh, shorter than the uh, time scales of the system and uh, this the system and the uh, uh, environment are weakly coupled um i mean there's there's an extra approximation which is a rotating wave but it kind of, of uh, uh, englobes this these two and in these conditions um you can you can derive a master equation so this is the long name for this master equation i'll, I'll call it Lindblad master equation or Lindbladian for short um, and so this is an equation for the, dense, uh, the reduced density matrix of the system alone. And it has an Hamiltonian part, as, as you are uh, used to, and then uh, um, a dissipative part. Um, so this is dissipative part, there's, um, there's things here called jump operators, and they, they uh, depend uh, um, on the specific uh, interactions of the system and the environment. Um, uh, so uh, this, this uh, I'll not derive the physical, uh, um, I mean, I'll not, not do a, a microscopic derivation of this equation. I'll just uh, use several examples where these L's are different, uh, um, uh, I mean, with different examples for the L's and for H. Now this, this equation is nice because it's, it, it transforms physical density matrices in physical density matrices. In particular, it's trace preserving, so probabilities are conserved and also the positivity of the density matrix is preserved, so you can always, I mean, it, it, it remains a uh, physical density matrix. Now, a few uh, things that I'm going to uh, need for uh, the following. So this, this operator L, it's a linear operator that acts on uh, density matrices. Um, and uh, I mean, if, if it's just the, the um, uh, unitary part, so this is just the commutation with the, with the row, uh, and this is the, the dissipative part. Um, and um, so the, this, this operator is non admission. So if I see this operator, so it's an operator that acts on the space of operators. So it's sometimes called a super operator. Um, and uh, so it has one zero eigenvalue. This is ensured uh, uh, by this form. Um, and, and it has a bunch of either, other eigen modes or eigen matrices, if you want, uh, with real, uh, where the real part of the, uh, the eigenvalue is, is smaller or equal to one. Uh, 
And so the evolution in the evolution, I can I can uh, do a partition of the identity in the same way I did do it. It's a bit different for for the non-emission case, but uh, you can decompose it in the, in the modes. And then in the long time limit, um, what happens is that uh, you decay to the steady state. So typically you have only one steady state. You can have more than one, but uh, in the I mean in a in a generic system you have one. Um, and and uh, so that the the time scale at which you decay is this Lievelian uh, gap that I, I call lambda. And uh, so this is, gives you the time scale of the decay to the steady state. So please interrupt and ask questions uh, okay, if, if there's some. Um, so having introduced uh, uh, this, this Levinland, let me give you the uh, first example. So this is uh, one of the simplest non-trivial examples I, I, um, I know of. Um, <clears throat> So this is one one spin, one big spin S. Okay, um, and um, so the Hamiltonian is still just given by the uh, uh, magnetic field here along the z direction, and then you have two, uh, three different uh, dissipative processes. There's one that is just dephasing. Um, uh, so these these uh, W's here are the jump operators here. I changed their name, so it uh, should be L in the other slide. <clears throat> And then uh, you have two other processes, one where you inject spins uh, or, or you, you, you flip the spin up and the other one you flip the spin down. Um, so now let's, let me uh, tell you what the steady state of, of this uh, Liouvillian with these uh, um, uh, properties will have depending on, on the speed. This, this, this is the this, uh, injection rate if, if you want uh, the polarization of, of uh, the environment. Um, so if P is very large, Oh, sorry, very negative. Then uh, you inject spins up uh, very fast. And so the, the, the magnetization of the spin in the steady state will be up. So eventually, if you wait a very long time, the spin will be uh, up. Uh, I mean, the same thing if you if P is, very, uh, is, is, is 1, so the spin uh, becomes down. Um, uh, so in between, you, you, you press, you overlap, uh, so you interpolate between and the other, in particular for P equals 0. Um, uh, the rate of up is the same as the rate of down, and so um, the 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 magnetization vanishes. In particular, the density matrix, the steady state of the density matrix, um, uh, sorry, the density matrix corresponding to the steady state uh, is proportional to the identity, um, and and so the polarization, the, the uh, mean value of S is zero. <clears throat> and in the thermodynamic limit, if you now increase the value of S, you see that you have a first order transition. Uh, uh, here um, for, for the magnetization. If you look at now the entropy of the system, okay, so it's an open system. So there's, I will not talk about entanglement entropy. This is really the von Neumann entropy of the, of the steady state. Um, and so it's a pure state for um, uh, P equals minus one or one. And then for P equals zero is a maximal uh, uh, ent entropic state, which is proposed to the identity. And so uh, here the, the entropy grows as a log of, of S, which is the, uh, I mean, uh, the Hilbert space, Hilbert space size that grows with linear with S. Uh, so this is for, for the steady state. So what, what you see here is a steady state phase, phase transition. So it's, uh, it's a transition that happens in the steady state of a living. And in the same way that transitions happens in ground states of Hamiltonians here, they can happen in, in steady state. Now, um, this system is, is, is quite nice because you can also have the full spectrum uh, analytically. Uh, um, so, so this is, uh, so now remember that the eigenvalues of this uh, operator of this with uh, have uh, um, negative imaginary parts, sorry, negative uh, real parts. And uh, um, so they, they lay uh, on this part of the complex plane. Um, and, and uh, so this, this is the structure for this particular Hamiltonian, uh, Liouvillian. Uh, and, and here, uh, well, we can kind of integrate the model exactly, and you can get the, um, I mean, not only these, these states, but then the density of these uh, uh, eigenvalues um, in, in the complex uh, plane as, as you take S to infinity. Um, so this is, again, one of the easiest cases one, one can find. Now we can just complicate a bit more. <clears throat> And so let me let me do that. So the the uh, jump operators or this, this uh, dissipative process are the same. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to complicate. So the, here I, I'm, I put a generic age, but I'll take just age equal uh, uh, in the z direction as before. 
I'll just introduce this, this term here. And this makes uh, uh, the Hamiltonian, I mean, this makes, uh, at least I don't know how to integrate this, this Lewillian in, in the same way as I integrated the, the previous one, but I still know how to uh, do some of the things in the spectrum, at least in some, uh, in, in most uh, um, part of parameter space, uh, also seems very uh, uh, structured. So see here the spectrum of, of, uh, of this uh, Lewillian uh, operator. Now, uh, again, the steady state here has many phases. Um, and so you see here, I'm not going to describe all these uh, phases that you see uh, in, 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 the, in the steady state of, of this model, but I, I'm just going to tell you that I can, I can try to characterize the phases by the number of, um, of steady states that they have at the classical level. So the large S uh, limit, you can see it as some semi-classical, uh, uh, some classical limit. And you can then look at the um, steady states in, in, the, in the classical limit. And these are these um, uh, black dots here. And so you have, you have situations where you have um, one steady state, two steady states, or, or three steady states. And uh, um, yeah, the dynamics, uh, it's, it's quite different. Uh, the, the two, two, I mean, in the way you approach a steady state, um, it's different if you're in, in these uh, different regimes. Um, so here you can also have, I mean, uh, this, this steady state phase transition. And if you if you go, if you look, so this is for example in the magnetization, uh, as a function of one of these parameters, you see there's a transition between this region two and the region one. So two steady states, and one steady state, and you can um, and you can also compute the uh, the entropy again, um, and you see it also diverges at the transition. Now the way I know how to do this at the thermodynamic limit is um, similar to what we can also do in equilibrium, meaning a mapping to bosons. So this is done by this oldstein primakov transformation. Um, so this is what, what you would use to, to say, uh, to see the spectrum of spin wave in, in, a, in a magnetic system. So here is only for one spin. Um, you, you, uh, you use the oldstein primakov uh, mapping, and then you develop around, say, uh, uh, large S, saying that the number of excitations is, is small. So when you do this now in the in the um, in this uh, spin Lewillian, you get a, a quadratic uh, a form of, of uh, an Hamiltonian. So you develop a, a two quadratic order. You 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 get a quadratic Hamiltonian and also a linear uh, um, jump operator. So this this together this this forms a quadratic uh, Lewillian problem that can be solved uh, exactly. Sometimes this is called the third uh, by third quantization method. But uh, uh, Pietro, yes. yeah, yeah. sorry, uh, we have a question from Alexei. Hi, Alexei. Sorry, I, I don't see you. Uh, I, I will try to. Okay. No, no, it's okay. Actually, I mean, I, I usually assume that Tillen is keeping track of that. That's why. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, please, please. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I mean, I have two questions. One is actually when you're saying you have several uh, steady states, uh, do you mean that as you change the parameters? So, I mean, that yeah. you have the transition from one steady state to the other? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so uh, uh, yeah, I just want to be sure that uh, it's either this or uh, you have for the same for one set of parameters you have several different steady states. But then uh, my you right, understanding. Right. Uh -huh. So it's both. Both. It's both. So you, you you do have a steady state and 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 you change parameters and you have the situations where you, you get two classical steady states. So now now I have to tell you what this means. Um, so this means that um, in, the, in the infinite S limit, you do have two states that have a zero eigen uh, where, where the where that are zero uh, eigenstates of the Liouvillian. But as soon mm -hmm. as S is finite, it, 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 I mean it's it's like the uh, double wall potential have symmetric and it's symmetric combinations, and oh, you mean they go mm -hmm. exponential. I mean the the steady so one is always zero and the, the other one goes exponentially to zero with S. Oh, so you mean, I mean, the quantum fluctuations always lift this degeneracy. That's yeah, what I would yeah, yeah. And then, and, then, and then you get a single steady state uh, um, as, as for finite S. Okay, because my understanding is that you always get a unique steady state with the Lindblad dynamics unless you well, have symmetries. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So here you don't have a symmetry, but, but mm -hmm. you, you have a, an exponential degeneracy as, as you... Um, as you increase the, the system size or the, the magnitude of the spin. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and the second question, can you, yeah, it's actually here, I mean, uh, maybe I'm jumping a bit ahead, but so when you're doing the Holstein Primakov, I guess, I mean, the square roots that you get there, you would expand them. So yeah, you, yeah, you, this... you expand everything. That's why you get a quadratic uh, so we're doing it in the end. Uh, right, so I mean, I was just curious here because you're dealing with just a single spin, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think there are, I mean, it's um, maybe, I mean, maybe that doesn't apply here, but I think there's an there's a representation of the spin algebra through the Majoranas, which uh, basically can be carried out exactly. You don't need to make any expansions. I yeah, don't know, yeah. would, would that, uh, would that yeah, help? But I think in the end, you still get an interacting fermionic problem that, that uh, you would not know how to solve in, in general. I mean, I, I don't expect this system to be integrable. Uh, mm. So um, it's it's regular, but but not 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 integrable. I, I think that's that would be the um, my take on on okay. this. But I mean, uh, it might be that for for some classes of parameters it's integrable, but in, in general, I don't think you can you can do analytic calculations until, until the end. So what you, what you can do is is to expand around the steady state, and then. Um, and, and then you get this quadratic uh, problem that 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 one is is uh, exactly solved. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so so with this quadratic thing, uh, quadratic uh, limb blood, now you can you can compute the spectrum. So this is this um, this red uh, sorry this, this uh, orange uh, uh, dots that you see here in this in this grid. That I mean the quadratic uh, limb blood ends. Are um, are very regular, so they have the spectrum that lies between this this uh, um, this, this lattice, and and you can see uh, here in the numerics of, of ED. Sorry, here you can see the numerics uh, of ED by diagonalizing this this matrix that corresponds to the full Liouville. You see that uh, um, as as you increase S, you you, um, you approach this this very regular lattice, uh, at least near the steady state, and then you, when you go far uh, far away. Uh, it takes much more um, uh, uh, larger s to, to get there. Um, so now one one funny thing that uh, I'd like to point here is that uh, so the, in the full spectrum of the Liouville, you not only see uh, uh, the the states that decay to the uh, to this um, steady state. So this would be these uh, these modes here, but you also see some set of modes that I have in blue. So these are the modes that. Uh, are near this uh, this uh, unstable state, uh, so this is an unstable steady state uh, classically, um, and, and it also uh, um, decays to uh, uh, um, to this uh, uh, stable steady state if you do a small perturbation. But uh, uh, so the spectrum in the spectrum of this Liouvillean, you also see some some substructure that we, at the beginning we didn't know where, where they came from, but it, it does come from uh, the unstable steady state. Um, so knowing uh, knowing this old spine Primakov uh, uh, mapping, um, you can get uh, um, a very accurate uh, uh, expressions for the entropy of the steady state, and these are the um, these this, uh, full lines that you see here, uh, where and, and, and these are the numerics for Perfanetis. Um Okay, so um, sorry, yes, yes. Pietro, okay. we we have a question from Tofik. Yes, sorry, could you uh, elaborate more on unstable steady state? Because in uh, from what I understand, steady state is by definition stable. So I'm a little confused. So again, this is uh, this is true only in the um, in the uh, classical uh, case. So if you take S to infinity, you you get a situation where you have classical equations of motion and they are mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, it's a fixed point. So if you start in this state, you still remain there. But if you mm -hmm. if you go a bit away from it, you will uh, um, um, go to the stable steady state eventually. Now, what this oh, means uh, in the quantum case is is that there are some states where you can start with, where the decay to the other state is very slow. So that's so this mm -hmm. so this corresponds to these blue uh, dots here. So if you if you happen to be there. Uh, to start in this uh, in a spin coherent state on that in that direction, um, you take a very long time to decay to the steady state, much more than if you started say uh, uh, here. <laughs> um, and uh, so this mode is a very uh, um, slow decaying mode, 
uh, even if it's very far from from the actual steady state. So you, uh, I mean, if 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 you're far from the steady state, sorry, uh, you expect to decay very fast. Uh, I mean, these these modes that are far from the steady state, you expect them to decay very fast. Uh, but this this um, this unstable state is a mode that is very far from the steady state, but it decays slowly still. Uh, so I, I think that's that's the uh, intuition that I have. Okay, okay thank you. Um, so these were uh, very simple examples. So there's, uh, I mean, people came up with much more complicated uh, things, uh, even when they know how to fully integrate them. So there's um, there's a class of of um, uh, uh, Revillians that are exactly solvable by mapping to existing uh, Hamiltonians uh, that are integrable, um, typically with complex parameters. So I have here two examples. So one, one family of examples is spins, fermions with dephasing. So these are mappable to Hubbard light models um, um, that, that are in, in 1D that are exactly solvable. And so people are able to obtain the full spectrum. Um, so also, um, I mean, there's some generalization using uh, Betty ansatz or this uh, algebraic Betty ansatz to fully connected uh, models where everybody sees everybody of spin. You can also get the full spectrum of these things. I mean, by now there's there's more examples here that I'm not citing. Now, one one drawback of well, one feature of this uh, kind of of uh, mappings is that the steady state is always trivial. It's always proportional to the identity. Um, this is easy to prove because of of the jump operators being Hermitian. So when when these jump operators are emission, you always get a steady state that is proportional to the identity. So there's another set of examples that's a bit different from this one, where um, you know how to get the steady state exactly. So there's some kind of, of integrability for the steady state, but only for the steady state. So you don't know about the rest of the spectrum uh, and, and the other eigenstates. So these are, uh, I mean, uh, these were uh, uh, investigated thoroughly by uh, Prose, and, and uh, so this, he started all these things, and also um, uh, Snita, uh, Marko Snitarich in, in Slovenia. So um, these are these boundary-driven one on the lattice models, um, and and uh, they are interesting in that respect. So you you know the study state exactly, but that's the only thing you. Know. <clears throat> and then uh, so that, that's and and then uh, there's generic models in a generic model. I mean, you don't know the steady state and you don't know the spectrum. So you don't know it, everything is, is, is generic. So the simple example is that take that that spin, that, that spin model that I gave you and start to perturb it. I think I did here with a cubic, a cubic uh, I think the Hamiltonian perturb it with a cubic term. And then the spectrum becomes not regular very fast. So here are two examples. And and uh, the rest of the talk will be telling you about uh, what, what can we, uh, uh, say about this kind of, of, of model. Um, so this is maybe a good, a good uh, time to ask questions if, if you have them. <clears throat> so if not, let me pass part to, to the second part, which is the chaos part. So, um, so in order to- Sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alexei just raised hand. Sorry, Pedro. <laughs> no, 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 it's-, it's, it's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, is there a generic recipe um, how you can construct the phase transitions in the steady state? So like what ingredients you need? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about constructing the steady state exactly, but at least- uh, You, you want a recipe to build models that have a phase transition. I, I, yeah. I, I don't have an answer for that. Um, I, I, I would like to have an answer for that, but I, I don't. I, I can tell you why I would like it in in, in the in a second, <laughs> but uh, okay. but I don't I don't know. Okay, so I mean, there's no nothing like I mean in in the equilibrium picture you would uh, expect if you have two competing uh, contributions, then perhaps putting more weight in one would favor it and you might get a transition. So there's nothing like that in the- uh, Well, you, you always have that. I mean, uh, for, uh, for a particular physical model, you can always try to to argue that, yeah, if there's some competition you expect to have to, I mean, okay, if you go to two study states that are very different in, in uh, uh, symmetries, for if you have a, in one case, this this double uh, study states in some limit. I mean, these this classical study states that are degenerate, and and um, and, and in, in some other limit you only have one. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a phase transition in the middle. But given the Liouvillean, um, yeah, it's it 
it's not always easy to to see that uh, that that you have that. Uh, so maybe it's not so different from the Hamiltonian case. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. But for a bit more complicated cases, I don't think you. I mean, I don't. At least I don't have a, a good answer for that. Um, other questions? Um, so okay. So let let me continue with the with the chaos part. So now, um, before going to the to the generic dissipative chaos, so let me go to the non-dissipative chaos. So chaos in in the Hamiltonian dynamics. And uh, I mean, this has been studying a lot from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, and and uh, I guess the question to ask is, what does a, a generic, what, what, what do generic Hamiltonians have, uh, have in common? So what can I say about a generic Hamiltonian? Um, now, to answer this question, what I would like to have is a model of a generic Hamiltonian. Uh, what is the most generic Hamiltonian I come up with? And um, one way of, of coming up with such an Hamiltonian is doing a principle of maximum entropy. I'll just take a random, a random Hamiltonian. Uh, now, random Hamiltonians come in different flavors depending on the symmetry, in particular, of the si of, uh, and, and the time reversal that uh, they obey to. Um, and so let me fix one uh, of such symmetries and then uh, generate a random matrix with uh, um, Gaussian weights with that symmetry. Um, and uh, so this by now, it's, they're, they're very well studied, random matrices, and there's a uh, whole uh, um, uh, field that I'm not going to uh, venture uh, into. Um, but I'll, I'll just give you the uh, rough uh, features of, of a random matrix. Now, the first thing I can ask is, what is the spectrum of, of a, a random matrix? Right? Um, and this is uh, the question that Pickman asked. Um, and and uh, uh, so with the, the right, uh, uh, so the, the spectrum is, is of the, of the Hamiltonian is real. So uh, it's, it's, it's on the real line that this, this uh, eigenvalues play. And uh, with the right normalizations, um, um, they, they have this, uh, so the density of states uh, forms this semicircle uh, law. Now this, this is not universal in the sense that if I take a, a physical system that is generic, they will, it will not have this, this kind of semicircle law. But there's other features of, of generic Hamiltonian. So another, another one uh, is the level spacing statistics. So I uh, take the eigenvalues here, the epsilons i, i are the eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian. I look at the differences between the consecutive eigenvalues. And then I, I ask, what is the probability of having a, different, a given distance? Now, um, there's some, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's more convenient to, to actually ask a slightly different question. I, I want the, um, the difference between uh, the ratios, consecutive ratios of these differences. I mean, the, the information model is the same, but the process is a bit more well-defined. And uh, um, the rough idea is that um, for a, a generic um, um, Hamiltonian or, or for a random uh, Hamiltonian coming from a random uh, uh, matrix, uh, for a spectrum coming from a random matrix, you, you get this, this so-called Wigner Dyson statistics. So this uh, P of R or P of S um, uh, obeys uh, some, some uh, law like, like this, this curve here. Um, and, and if you, on the contrary, look at uh, the statistics of uncorrelated points on, on the line, um, you get this Poisson statistics, which is also the statistics that you get if you look at um, uh, integrable models. So this was uh, very studied in the uh, uh, 80s and 90s. Uh, and and uh, again, that's what, uh, let me just stress what, what this universal means that in, in a, a random matrix theory, independent on the, on the details of distributions, uh, uh, you, you get always the same kind of, of uh, um, GOE here statistics. So this. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the shape of this curve can vary a bit, but only depends on, on the symmetry of the problem. So how, how it transforms in this case with respect to time reversal. Um, and, and it's not only true for, uh, for random matrices, but also for generic Hamiltonians, uh, physical Hamiltonians. And uh, in the case of, of uh, integral Hamiltonians, you get this Poisson statistics uh, that, that we saw before. 
so this this led to this conjecture that again in the 70s and 80s um, that uh, uh, systems that have a semi-classical uh, integrable limit then we see would have Poisson statistics and systems for which the semi-classical limit is chaotic uh, will will uh, obey these random matrix uh, uh, statistics or this is Fignon Dyson statistics. Now this this um, uh, conjectures were extended to the many body case, um, and 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 here there's no semi-classical limit, so I, I cannot tell you if, if the system is, is then uh, the classical limit is uh, is classic uh, is quant uh, sorry chaotic or or um, integrable. So this is kind of working definition of, of quantum many body chaos. You look at the statistics, and uh, if it's Poisson, you say that it's regular or close to integrable, and if it's uh, um, um, if it's a uh, Wigner Dyson, you say, well, this is a generic system and it's close to a chaotic, a chaotic dynamic. So uh, now that I introduced the, the, the thing in the Bolivian uh, uh, case, I'm, I'm going to, to do the same for, sorry, the, the Hamiltonian case, I'm going to do the same for the Bolivian uh, uh, dynamic. So again, the, the, the questions are exactly the same. What do dissipative uh, systems have in common? Now that they are not closed anymore. And uh, to answer that, first I give, give you a model of a dissipative uh, system. Um, so, so the program is twofold. First, I have to come up with a suitable model uh, and compute its properties. So the properties will be uh, spectral properties, uh, uh, the steady state, uh, the, the gap, so how it relaxes to, and, uh, and then we'll see uh, which one of those can be universal. So this is the second uh, part. Second part is to take a bunch of, of uh, uh, physical models that I know of and, um, and try to determine which, which things of, of these uh, uh, generic Liouvillians are, are universal and which are not. Um, and and uh, if, if possible, uh, I want uh, uh, some, some signature of chaos that also can be uh, distinguished between sy these symmetry classes. Um, so this is our, our uh, attempt to do a generic uh, Liouvillian. Um, so you take uh, for the Hamiltonian part, just a, a generic uh, GUE here. It's, uh, there's no time reversal. So GUE is unitary, uh, Gaussian unitary ensemble. Uh, GOE is just an orthogonal ensemble. So in this case, we took uh, GOE. Um, then uh, for the uh, Liouvillian part, for sorry, the dissipative part, you can decompose the jump operators in some basis. And, and then what you get here is um, a matrix, uh, complex matrix, but uh, uh, which is positive defined. The way of, of uh, generating a matrix that's positive defined is, is to, um, um, to do it as a product of, of W and W dagger. And these are just generic matrices that can be even uh, uh, square matrices. They, they don't, sorry, uh, rectangular matrix, they don't need to be uh, square. Um, and and uh, so there's there's again an example for that. It's called the Geneva ensemble. So you can look at um, uh, the the uh, spectrum of of this kind of uh, matrices. So this is what what you get uh, typically. So the, the again with the right normalization, the spectrum of a, a generic matrix which is not Hermitian lies within some uh, some circle. Um, and so uh, here, uh, so we have two kinds of matrices, the H and the Ws. And with this, we, we cook up this, um, this random Liouville. Now that there's three parameters here. So there's the size of the Hilbert space. This also existed before, but now there's two others. So one is the rank of the dissipator. So this is, I, I didn't stress too much, but this is like the, the number of dissipative channels that, that I get. So imagine that you have a system that uh, like a 1D system that only couples to the, to the environment at the end. So here you have uh, typically a few channels of, of dissipation, but if, if, you, if you couple to an environment everywhere uh, in the system, then the, the channels of dissipation are typically uh, of this, I mean, grow with system size. So this is this, is this R. And then uh, uh, the other thing is the, is the G is just the strength of the dissipation. So this sits here in front of the dissipative term. Um, so now uh, let's look at some uh, typical spectrums that you get, you get from these um, uh, Liouvillians. And um, so this is, uh, uh, I mean, you, you can uh, 
distinguish three different regimes depending on the strengths of this uh, uh, dissipation. So one is, uh, we call it a weak dissipative or, or this uh, or perturbative regime, because you can get an idea of what is happening by doing perturbation theory in, 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 small, in small g. And uh, so we have here the steady state and then the rest uh, is some blob of eigenvalues that is actually Gaussian distributed in, in, uh, in the complex plane. Then there's a crossover region that is quite difficult to describe. And uh, in the large uh, or the strong dissipative limit, you get this lemon shape um, uh, curve that was actually whose, whose uh, boundary was actually um, put forward by uh, Denisov and, and collaborators um, uh, using this uh, free probability that we, we learned at the time. It was very nice. Um, so they, they got the, the um, the shape of, uh, sorry, the, the boundary of, of this region. So in the case where uh, uh, this situation is, is strong and uh, the number of, of uh, channels actually goes to infinity. Yes, so the, is there some question? Uh, yes, we have a question from Tofik. Yes, uh, isn't the derivation of the uh, lean blood of, uh, master equation requires the, the sort of dissipation strength to be weak? Yeah. So, oh, so, so how, so can, you how, how can I, G? okay. So, so actually this is not G. So there's several questions, uh, answers to that question. So actually it is not G, this is G effective. And so this is G uh, uh, scaled by N. So you, you can still have a weak dissipation, but if N is very large, we see Hilbert mm. space size is very large, you still go to something like this. Okay, so okay. this is, uh, so this is one, one. Uh, so there, there, there's another uh, way of answering your question is that, that there's some cases where you can get uh, a limb blood like, uh, uh, equation doing a strong dissipative approximation. Okay, so the typical, uh, um, I, I don't know the, of all details of this part of this derivation, but I, I, I know it, it exists. Uh, um, so there's some cases where you, you get to the same kind of equation from a different set of approximations. And, and one of them is, is strong coupling, uh, so mm -hmm. strong dissipation. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Right, so, so now you can, you can uh, uh, study different things. So I, I will skip some slides here because of time. Um, so we can study the gap. Again, there's, uh, I mean, there's three regimes for this, this gap. You can also get the, uh, the gap in exactly in the thermodynamic limit, um, but I, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Um, uh, I'm going to look here a bit to the, to the study state so we can study the, the steady state of these uh, random levillians. Um, again, so the steady state basis is random. So what it's the spectrum of the steady state that that is uh, um, that 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 we are interested in. So one thing that we can look at is the purity of the steady state. Um, again, in these different regimes, g uh, small, intermediate, and in, in, in large, um, and uh, so the this. The, uh, I mean, the, the fully mixed state has a, a, a purity that is grow, uh, that goes to zero as one over n, and the, the Hilbert space size, and so we can we can uh, study the difference between uh, our uh, steady state of, of the random Lewin in this this fully mixed state, and uh, you can see actually that for small dissipations. Um, this uh, um, you're closer to the fully mixed state, and then for large dissipations. Uh, and and the, the spectrum of the steady state, so this is not the spectrum of the villain, is that the spectrum of the density matrix of the steady state. So for small dissipation, it's Gaussian, and for large dissipation and large number of channels, it, uh, it, 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 it has this uh, semicircle shape as a random matrix, uh, as a usual random matrix. Um, okay. Now, now that's the part I want to pass uh, maybe five minutes on, uh, which is, uh, so I, I didn't tell you, but uh, uh, the both things that are, all the things that I, I gave you now about, so the, the, the spectrum, the, the shape of the spectrum, uh, the, the steady state spectrum and um, uh, the gap, these are not universal, okay? If you look at some, some physically uh, motivated Liouvillian, you'll not find anything like this in the same way that for the Hamiltonian case, uh, the, the 
the density of states of a, of a usual um, <clears throat> um, chaotic Hamilton is, is not a similar circle. Now, <clears throat> we want to, to find uh, 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 or to propose uh, uh, something similar to, to the level spacing statistics. But now the, the, uh, you have complex eigenvalues. So what we came up with, with was this construction where you construct this, this Z by looking at one eigenvalue and the complex span and, and the two neighbors. Uh, so nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor, and then doing this, this ratio, this complex ratio. Um, and now we ask, well, what, what, is the, what is this distribution of, of Z? And again, you can, we can to do, do two things. So you can take uh, uh, uncorrelated points on the, on the plane and do this, this uh, exercise, and you get uh, the equivalent of Poisson statistics. So this is, um, uh, I mean, this, this uh, thing means that you're equally distributed inside the, the unit circle and it's zero outside because, I mean, it's the way how this thing is constructed. Now, if you take a random Levillian and, and you do the same thing, then you get this kind of shape, uh, uh, which is a donut with a byte here. And uh, uh, this, this shape you also get by simply do, doing the um, looking at the spectrum of uh, uh, a Geneva unitary ensemble, for example. So it's it's not only the spectrum of, of a random Levillian, but of a, of a generic matrix that is not uh, unitary. <clears throat> um, so you can you can look at this, and you can also look at the, say the average um, cosine of, of this angle. So you can look at this as a radio plus an angle. So you, you can look at the average of the angle. Uh, of the cosine of the angle in the radius of, of the radius in these two uh, uh, in these two cases, and they give you different uh, uh, values. So, so this could be a signature uh, if you want to a two number signature. You don't have to look at the whole distribution. So now uh, that we established this for a random uh, Liouville, let's do that for uh, uh, specific models and see that indeed they they follow these these two. Um, these, these two uh, trends. So one is... Uh, yes, Pedro, yes? sorry, uh, Alexei has another question. Go ahead, Alexei. Yeah, sorry. Uh, could you just go back one slide? Um, I mean, when you were talking about the average of the cosine uh, theta, mm -hmm. uh, is there in general any structure in um, in the distribution of thetas? I guess yes, yeah, you yeah. can maybe yeah. expand it in some... Yeah, I mean, oh, so... Um, then it, so you see, you is see it, that, yeah. So there's so, so in in this case, there's some kind of, of level repulsion, sorry, re repulsion in the sense that uh, um, one eigenstate doesn't want to, to sit too close to other eigenstates. Uh, so I, one eigenvalue doesn't want to sit too close to other eigenvalues, but also there's a preference for for the um, uh, for the angle. So they. Uh, uh, and, and and I mean, this is easy, more or less easy to see if you if you put three points on a line and ask what mm -hmm. is the probability of having uh, the nearest neighbor. Uh, uh, so so this this thing means that the nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor are on the same direction, right? Um, because right. So so okay. um, yeah. So so this this bites you a, a bit of this. So it's much more probable that they're in opposite directions. Um, so in, uh, so that that's why. You have a maximum here and, and, and a byte there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I, I was basically curious. Uh, so, if you again, is, is there any structure in the um, distribution of the theta? So, I mean, um, so this byte, uh, how do you describe it analytically? So, I guess um, I, I can. I, can yeah, yeah, I can go mm -hmm. to that in the end. So, Lukas had the, okay. uh, a go on this. So, in the same way that. That for the um, uh, the, the level statistics uh, in in the Hamiltonian case, you you have this uh, Wigner surmise that gives you uh, a good approximation of, of uh, the, um, the 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 Wigner Dyson statistics. Here you can do the same thing. Um, it's a bit more difficult, but uh, we managed to get a good approximation of, of this. I, I I can go to that in the end if you're, if you're interested. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. Um, so let me go, go, go back to this, uh, to this model. So, so we have, uh, 
we can look at integrable models that are known of, of Brazilian dynamics. And you, you, you can look at the uh, uh, non-integral models. Actually, it's just you take an integral model and you perturb it uh, with a generic uh, term. And, um, and, and yeah, and, and you see, indeed you see that for integral, we get this Poissonian case and then for, um, um, for, for generic, you get this, this uh, beaten donut. Um, and so you see that not only for, um, for the villains, but also for the, um, so, uh, so in the same way that you can do, let's say circuits with, uh, with, with unitary operations, you can also have quantum circuits with uh, non-unitary operations. So these are called uh, cross maps. And, uh, and so if you do, if you do uh, 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 cross maps, they can also be integrable and non-integrable. Um, and and you, you, you see the same thing. If they're integrable, then you get, you get one kind of, of uh, uh, statistics and they're non-integral, you get the other. Um, you can also look, look at open quantum circuits. So it's the same, uh, it's kind of the same thing. Um, here, um, then uh, you can look even at non-Hermitian Hamiltonian. So this has nothing to do with blue villains. It's just, you take a non-Hermitian Hamiltonian, look at the spectrum, and, and now look at the complex ratio statistics. And again, integrable gives you Poisson and, and uh, non-integral uh, gives you this, this bit and dot. Uh, and uh, even for classical so stochastic processes, so this is not quantum, because nothing to do with quantum, it's just that uh, some classical pro processes are, are um, characterized by these um, uh, uh, stochastic matrices, I guess that's what, it's, what they are called. Uh, their spectrum is also not, not real. Um, and, and, and so if you analyze it with these complex spacing ratios, you also see this, this behavior. So the last thing uh, uh, that I'm going to uh, maybe uh, run over is, uh, so this is exactly one of these uh, uh, cases where we, we did an open quantum, uh, we played with these open quantum circuits. Uh, so this is um, a, a, a circuit that, that you get by, so imagine that you have a bunch of, of uh, uh, qubits, and then instead of doing a joint unitary operation between qubits, you, you, you do, you do non-unitary operation. So you do some operation where you, you have an environment and you, you trace over the environment. Um, and uh, we were uh, uh, very lucky to find that uh, there's, there's some of these processes that you can um, find that are exactly integrable based on, on uh, some R matrix of the Ender model. I mean, eventually this goes back to the, um, the uh, uh, Bethe ansatz and, and uh, the, the, the usual uh, integrability in 1D. Um, but uh, so we, we, we could find this that, that, uh, that I mean, this integrable instance is, is indeed uh, 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 Poissonian. And then, and then you can look at uh, different uh, uh, generalizations of this model that either respect, I mean, the equivalent of, of time reversal symmetry or not. And, uh, in, in, and you see that uh, the, the way that this, this donut gets beaten is slightly different. And, and this you can see in the mean values of R and mean values of, of uh, cosine uh, theta. So this, these are the Poissonian case. So this is the G, gene OE, so the Geneva uh, orthogonal ensemble. And this is another ensemble, I mean, another uh, 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 symmetry class that is called the AI dagger, uh, where these uh, values of AI dagger is, are slightly different from the values of gene OE. And then uh, here you see that uh, with system size, you have, uh, points either going there or, or stopping uh, uh, there at the, at the AI dagger uh, volume. So you can also distinguish between, uh, between uh, symmetry classes in, in this way. So I think I arrived to the uh, summary uh, of my talk. So uh, just uh, briefly, so uh, I showed you integral distributive models and, uh, um, uh, and I, I also hope to convince you that uh, uh, generic models are very different from those, uh, at least in the middle of the spectrum. In the bottom of the spectrum, sometimes you can linearize it, uh, like we did with this uh, old sign Primakov uh, case. Um, and then for the dissipative quantum chaos, uh, we have a full program, which, which uh, um, amounts to a model uh, generic uh, lean blood, and then compute its properties and establish uh, uh, these the signatures of, of chaos like you do for Hamiltonian dynamics. So I, I can stop here. I, I went a bit over time. Um, I have some generalities to 
and comments, but I think uh, I can leave them here and then you can ask my questions uh, afterwards. Mm. So now okay. I will expand your, to see your faces. Um, okay, thank you, Pedro, for uh, your excellent talk. Uh, let us thank uh, Pedro. Uh, and uh, questions, uh, Juzar, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dylan, and thanks, Pedro, for the talk. So just wondering in the last part of your talk, if you were to look at the steady state density matrices mm -hmm. as, uh, and try to get the sort of spectral statistics out of the density matrices, would this uh -huh. correlate with what you see from the Lovillian, meaning integrable would mean so for the density matrix, since it's a Hermitian object, you would either get a uh, Poissonian or you would get, uh, uh, I mean. So I we didn't, actually we didn't look at the statistics in the integrable case. So th this is always for a random Lovillians, what we did here. And this is just as a function of the, of the uh, dissipation. So for, for a, a small dissipation, you get this Gaussian, um, um, Distribution of eigenvalues, and for large dissipation, you get this semicircle uh, law. Um, actually, that, that's a good question. What happens if you have a, a, a regular, uh, um, uh, yeah, a, a, a regular uh, system, and you look at the, density, the the eigenvalues of the density matrix? Yeah, I, I, I don't know what. Because okay. you seem to have these universal signatures in terms of the Lubillian, which is this, I, I, it looks more like a horseshoe shape or, you know, the, the perfect round uh, in terms of the complex spacing ratios. Uh, so that's where I was a bit, uh, that, that's mm -hmm. where my question came from. That since you see these universal signatures in the Lubillian, mm -hmm. would you also see them in the density matrix or not? And if there's a perfect correlation between them. So I, I... I know that Thomas Prozen uh, look at, looked at some instances of this in, in these right. uh, cases of, um, of the boundary driven systems. Yes. And I don't know what the, but I don't know why the answer is there. Uh, I mean, there, there it seems to correlate with the standard notion of what you would have for Hamiltonian systems. Okay, okay. So again, that was also one of the basic reasons of asking you this, whether there mm -hmm. is a sort of correlation between what you see in the Lubillian and the density matrix. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Tofik. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so in, in the usual, uh, quantum chaos discussion at the Hamiltonian level, there's usually a correlation between, you know, chaos and ergodicity, uh, non-ergodicity and this kind of thing. And I'm wondering whether this kind of chaos defined at the super operator level also has some kind of uh, non-ergodic or ergodic behavior at the super operator space. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so I think that's one of these comments goes in this direction. Uh, maybe it's this one. So, so uh, um, how do I start? So the, the studies, the, 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 the thing with evolution of dissipative systems is that eventually you always end up in a steady state. Right? Um, and, and for a generic system, it's a unique study state. So what, what it means to be chaotic, um, has to be, I mean, the notion of, of, of chaos there, uh, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't completely grasp in the sense that, um, I mean, there's no two, uh, so if you want to, to reason in the, the classical sense, two trajectories will not, uh, will not diverge forever. They eventually will converge and, 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 and converge all to the steady state. Um, so, uh, I mean, in, in the end, everything is dominated by the gap. And, and so this notion of the open of exponent or, or something like this, that, that uh, I don't know how to define it in this case. Um, so wh whatever chaos is here, it, 
it cannot be defined in that way. Um, so maybe at short times, you still expand the, the, the in, in phase space, but eventually, um, it all ends up all, all all ends up in the same in the same thing. So I, I think. I mean, I mean, I didn't answer your question, but I don't know how to answer it. So that's that's my take on that. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's it's interesting to think about. Thank you. Do we have any further questions from the audience? Uh, maybe if not, I can I can uh, uh, try to answer Alex's. Uh, oh, by the way, that's a slide I I, I didn't uh, I wanted to show, but I didn't. So there's uh, there's an opening for a joint postdoctoral positions between uh, Lisbon and CSRC. So if someone wants to uh, uh, to pass some time in both these institutions, please contact me. And, uh, I can uh, I'll be happy to to talk. So but what I wanted really to show you was uh, this. So, uh, so this is to to answer Alex's uh, uh, question. Um, so if you're familiar with this uh, Wigner uh, service, uh, what he did was to look at two by two matrices and, and, uh, and see if you can derive this, um, um, this, this uh, uh, the statistics of, of, of the GUE, for example. So what, what Lucas did, he, he did the same uh, for, um, for non-emission matrices. Um, that have a, a, a three by three that are three by three, for example, and there you get your thermos is very bad, <laughs> okay, and it's very bad because of of um, I mean in in so this is uh, this is uh, something about neighbors, right? And and uh, the, in three uh, if you only have three eigenvalues, you have a lot of boundaries, <laughs> so you don't really have uh, three neighbors. <laughs> So what, what he did is he put these these points on a on a donut, okay? He called this uh, I mean we call it uh, this this sa uh, 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 because he's Lucas uh, uh, so sa ensemble. <laughs> um, so so uh, he put on a, on a donut and, and on a donut and then he did the same thing and and there uh, there you can have a, a good services with with small systems and uh, so this is the this density of, of the distribution of ratios of radius, and this is the angle. And you see that for even for three by three is not perfect, but then, uh, sorry, this is, uh, but three by T, uh, if you just do it, as, as I say, and you just put it in the complex plane, then it's, it's not good at all. It's this uh, uh, dashed line here. Uh, but the, if you put it on a, on a donut, then, then it's, uh, it's much better. And then it, it goes better and better with the, with the, Number of eigenvalues that you put that you consider. So I'm not sure if that's what you were asking, but that uh, uh, that that's what we we did. I mean, uh, with respect to this uh, um, to this distribution function. Uh, Alexi. Yeah, well, I was basically curious if the um, the distribution of the theta, I mean, if say if you expand it over something like Legendre polynomials, if there's any simple structure. But oh, I think, I, I mean, this byte is basically the, the generic feature. So. Yeah, that 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 I am not sure. I mean, uh, maybe Lucas would have some idea because he he looked at the the structural detail, but but I mean. Even for the Wigner case, I don't think you have a closed expression for large n. Uh, yeah, yeah, perhaps. I mean, I, so, I think the, the so only generic, I, I, yeah. the only generic feature is the byte, which has a clear uh, physical meaning. And and, and this um, uh, this depression here in the middle, so that that is yeah, also yeah. level proportion, uh, yeah. as you have in the in the usual. Uh, Miltonian case. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any further questions? Let me just ask again. So why uh, why a donut? Why do we have to uh, put a few eigenvalues on a donut to? Uh, 
So, so the 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 reason why uh, if you do it on a plane, um, it, you get such a a, 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 a bad uh, approximation is because uh, I mean, if you only have uh, three uh, eigenvalues, you have a lot of of uh, boundaries, <laughs> right? Uh, because typically this is something about the bulk of the spectrum, right? And with with three eigenvalues. Um, that's not really a bulk on the spectrum. So by putting it in, in, the, in this donut, you, you, you kind of are emulating the fact that, uh, yeah, again, values are in, inside. I, see. I mean. Uh, I see, I see. So it's not so much the, uh, it's not so much the, uh, the, if you wish, topology of the donut, but it's just that the things cannot get too far from each other. Right, right, yeah. So we, we, okay. we try to do it on a sphere, but in the end, the donut will work much, much better. So what about the sphere? Yeah, so uh, I, I forgot exactly the status of the sphere. I think uh, eventually Lucas make it work, but I think the donut worked better. Okay, and what about, uh, can you remind again? So so the, uh, the GOE distribution uh, was obtained, as you uh, said, also for a small uh, two by two matrix, or three mm. times two by three matrix. So what, what about uh, the boundary conditions there? Or, I mean, do you also have to do such tricks and uh, to? Uh, no, for, for the Hamiltonian case, no. I think yeah. you can get you get you can get away with just uh, uh, with just doing things on a line. And why would that be so? Uh, I mean, with a few only, right? Yeah. Points. How many you said you need? And here I need three. I mean, to to have well, some reasonable. No, no, for, for the Hamiltonian case, yeah. Oh, I think by, with two by two, you already get some, some, something two. that is, yeah. Two. So yeah. they could go as far as they want away from each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I have a good, a good answer to that, but uh, yeah, Wigner's calculation was, was with two by two matrix. I mean, you, you get, you get small corrections. As you as you increase the number of eigenvalues, but but two by two already gets you the the right shape, and and here, I mean the minimum would, 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 that that is three, I mean really misses the uh, the, the 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 correct shape. Mm. Okay. Uh, Perhaps the the square is wrong. Maybe uh, if you try a circle. Uh... Uh, well. well the, the square. I mean, the, I mean, I guess in, in the complex plane, maybe. I mean, for for three. Um, you know, we, we put it on a donut, right? With with periodic. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. On a torus. I guess. Okay. Any further questions from the audience or comments? Uh, why was this? Uh, um... The average of the cosine zero, or maybe I got it wrong, for the integrable. Oh, be, because uh, there, uh, I guess, uh, so your question is about yeah. the thing. Um, so here, you really have no, um, no correlation. So you can you can think about you just have a bunch of dots in a, that are uncorrelated on the plane, and there. So clear. I mean, th there's no notion of, of level repulsion. Repulsion. So that uh, that middle thing is not there. Now, where why? Uh, so in this case. Uh, I think it's just a, a, a consequence of no level repulsion. So if there's no level repulsion, uh, I guess it's it's um, uh, it's it's as likely to have nearest neighbors on the, on the same side or in opposite sides. So nice. ne next nearest neighbor, any nearest neighbor on on the same side and opposite side. If you have level repulsion, then then you want to put one on those one side and the other one on the other side. 
and uh, I probably didn't understand this well, but uh, uh, your the true eigenvalues in the complex plane are all uh, in the in the left uh, yeah, half yeah. Of, of the plane, right? So it looks like there is still some information about angles. You can't go too far to the right. Um, so, so so this is true for the Liouvillian case, but we looked at just simple random matrices that that. Uh, um, that have uh, equally spaced, uh, uh, I mean, that, that have, uh, uh, not equally spaced, uh, um, uh, I mean, isotropic spectrums. And, um, and, and, and you still see this. So th this is not a feature of, of I mean, it's, it's, um, uh, but, but in any case, I think if you, if you do that in the middle of the spectrum, you don't, re you wouldn't really know that that uh, the spectrum is only on one side of the complex plane. So I guess that... So you mean that, okay, the spectrum is always on the left uh, part, uh, half plane, but uh, if you go somewhere in the middle yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. of the spectrum and look at IC, mm -hmm. and you will see some kind of isotropic uh, distribution. So then that, uh, that will also, then uh, these distributions will uh, still depend on where you are, right, uh, in your... Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, what, how, 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 how do they depend it? Yeah. So we did it for, for all states. So, uh, so then since the boundaries are, have measure zero, this should be interpreted as, as states that are in the middle of. So this, this, these are properties of, of eigenstates that are somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. So uh, I, I mean, in the in spectral boundaries, yeah, this should be very different. Actually, um, for, for systems, for chaotic systems, uh, if you go to the edge uh, of the spectral edges, you, you don't see uh, random matrix uh, statistics, right? You, you can see even uh, Poisson-like things because I, I think one way, I mean, my intuition or one way that I think about this so, is, is that we can do things like uh, mean field approximations and, and spin wave theory because, uh, because the, the bottom of the spectrum of, of uh, uh, physical models is really non-generic. If it was generic, then there was no hope to to approximate these these complicated Hamiltonians by quadratic things. So I think here is the same. So the things near the steady state, you 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 would have some hope to approximate with some uh, um, simple uh, uh, arguments, but but the middle of the spectrum is is, is really chaotic, and that, that there's no, there's no hope. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Okay, um, so I don't see any uh, further raised hands. So uh, let us thank uh, Pedro again uh, for his uh, excellent seminar. I like, I like your, your applause, uh, time. <laughs> uh,